Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, your weekly news program on science, technology, invention and innovation. I am Ashwarya Kapoor with you. In today's episode, we will talk about the International Conference on Emerging Trends in Biosciences and Chemical Technology held in Jammu. We will also tell you about a two-day international space debate organized at Abu Dhabi. There will be lots more science news, but let's begin with the headlines. International Conference on Emerging Trends in Biosciences and Chemical Technology concluded in Jammu. Delegates from 14 countries participated in the event, organized in collaboration with CSIR, Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine. An initiative to strengthen the representation of women in the global health ecosystem, DBT and BIRAC organized a conference on women leading change in health and science in India in New Delhi. India will take forward cooperation with UAE in the space sector. At International Abu Dhabi Space Debate, Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh reiterated India's achievements in space sector. And information about the latest scientific and technological activities in our special segment, Science Express. And now the news in detail. Recently, an international conference on emerging trends in biosciences and chemical technology was organized in Jammu. This conference was organized from the 3rd to the 5th of December 2022 at Sri Mata Vaishnu Devi University in collaboration with CSIR, Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine Jammu and the Biotech Research Society of India. The conference was attended by participants from 14 countries including USA, Greece, South Korea, Scotland and Singapore. Here is a Science Monitor report on the event. India's bioeconomy has grown from $10 billion to more than $80 billion in the last eight years, said Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, at an international conference in Jammu recently. The conference was organized from December 3rd to 5th under the title Emerging Trends in Biosciences and Chemical Technology. With an aim to take forward the emerging opportunities in the field of biotechnology with international partnership, the conference was organized by the School of Biotechnology, Sri Mata Vaishno Devi University, Jammu, in collaboration with CSIR, Indian Institute of Integrative Medicine, and the Biotech Research Society of India. The conference was attended by 14 international participants from the USA, Greece, South Korea, Scotland, Singapore, Thailand, Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Malaysia, and Vietnam, and around 300 participants from almost every state of India. The participants included subject matter experts, invited speakers, and industry leaders. In his address, the Union Minister said that India's investment in bioeconomy has now reached 4,200 crore rupees and more than 25,000 skilled jobs have been created. और मुझे खुशी है इस बात की कि इस विश्वविद्यालय ने भी आज एक अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर की गोष्ठी की है बायो इकोनॉमिक्स को लेकर और बायो साइंसेज को लेकर के जो आने वाले समय में भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था में एक बड़ा प्रमुख भूमिका निभाने वाली है क्योंकि अभी तक पिछले सात सत्तर सात दशकों तक लगभग जितना भी हमारी अर्थव्यवस्था की निर्भरता रही अधिकतर वो पश्चिम के राज्यों दक्षिण भारत के राज्यों में लेकिन जो हमारे इतने सारे सरमाए हैं जो हिमालय में बसे हुए हैं हमारी बायोडायवर्सिटी हमारा अरोमा का एसेट हमारा मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स हर्ब्स जिसकी तरफ कभी तवज्जो नहीं दी गई पहली बार मोदी सरकार के द्वारा और आपको जानकर खुशी और हम सब के लिए गर्व की बात है कि पर्पल रेवोल्यूशन जिसकी चर्चा पर्पल क्रांति जिसकी चर्चा देश भर में की जा रही है उसका जन्म जम्मू कश्मीर में हुआ लेवेंडर एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप का सहारा लेकर के अनेकों नौजवानों ने लाखों रुपया कमाना शुरू किया है और एक स्टार्टअप्स का एग्रीटेक स्टार्टअप्स का एक एक नया चलन एक नया कल्चर डेवलप हो रहा है और उसकी उसका सबसे अधिक रिसोर्स यदि कहीं है तो वो इन हिमालयन क्षेत्रों में है द बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सेक्टर इज द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग सेक्टर इन इंडिया विच इज डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू कॉमन लाइफ 
That is why in the year 2014, there were just 53 biotech startups and that number has grown to more than 5,300 in 2022. The biotech industry has also surpassed $1 billion in R&D spending. Currently, 75 biotech incubators are working in the country and various biotech startups in the country are now producing more than 700 products. This has caught the attention of several countries that are now looking towards India. In fact, the day is not far when India will be among the top five countries with a global ecosystem of biotechnology. These successes and achievements have further enhanced the credibility of Indian professionals in every field on the global platform. The world has increased confidence in Indian skills and innovations, including the field of biotechnology. Indian startups are also proving their utility in the fields of health, molecular biology, material science, nanomaterials, natural products and green chemistry, environment, animal science, etc., which is further enhancing India's self-reliance in all these fields. Recently, a conference titled Women Leading Change in Health and Science in India was organized in New Delhi. Organized by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India and the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council in collaboration with Women Lift Health and Grand Challenges India, the conference was inaugurated by Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. Melinda French Gates, co-chair Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, along with all the stakeholders were also present on the occasion. A Science Monitor report. The contribution of half the world's population, that is women, has been commendable in every field. And with changing times, women are moving forward with increased confidence in every field. In India, several women-centric projects are underway to take advantage of this change in the role of women. As part of this, a conference titled Women Leading Change in Health and Science in India was recently organized in New Delhi by DBT Pyrac in collaboration with Women Lift Health and Grand Challenges India. The objective of the program is to promote women's leadership and identify pathways and goals to strengthen the representation of women in India and the global health ecosystem. The conference was attended by Melinda Gates, co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister for Science and Technology and Earth Sciences, along with representatives of partner institutions. The Union Minister said that instead of being passive beneficiaries of government initiatives, women are now increasingly becoming policy initiators. That in very recent times, India has graduated from an era of women participation to an era of women leadership. And that is happening very visibly, very illustriously, very prominently. But the mindset of the society, and maybe also some of the male gender, is not equally accepting it at the same pace as it is happening. And therefore, I think it's time we should start discussing how best to avail of the change being led by women and how best to accept all the good things happening under the women leadership. The whole purpose is trying to see how we can look at the leadership development in women and this particular session today focuses on women in health and science. I think the whole area and issue of women leadership is so important. We talk about empowering women, we talk about bringing in that change. We are already on that journey. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, working for long in India, has expanded its partnerships in the country, particularly in the health sector. The foundation has also contributed 65 million US dollars to the Grand Challenges India initiative implemented by DBT and BIRAC. During the conference, Melinda Gates appreciated the steps taken by the Government of India for ensuring gender equality over the last few years. She said 
that policies made for women should be developed by women and that it is imperative to include women in decision making to ensure the success of these policies. Women are the backbone of every healthcare system in the world. They're the nurses, they're the aides, they're the community health workers, and they're providing everything from neonatal care all the way to cancer care. And in India, it's the women health workers who were the heroes of the pandemic. They were getting people immunized and going door to door to test for COVID and arrange treatment. And yet, 83% of the doctors in this country are men. And who runs the hospitals? Who runs the research labs? Who makes the decisions about policy and priorities and budgets? Men. And that's the case worldwide. Women make up 75% of the global health workforce, but they're only 25% of the senior leaders worldwide. So the lack of women at the top has implications for every single corner of the health system. I think what is also very heartening to note is women entrepreneurs, particularly in biotech industries, are really doing uh, exceptionally well. In fact, about, about somewhere about 30% of them are women entrepreneurs that are supported by BIRAC. In India, women scientists have carved a niche for themselves in science-based startups science technology engineering and mathematics, information technology, space, nuclear science, drones and nanotechnology, and many of the big scientific projects, including that of Gaganyaan, are being led by women scientists. This is an inspiration for all women working in fields like health, education, business, medicine, sports and agriculture. Such conferences are good opportunities to showcase the experience of women leadership in India and the emerging changes that will help build momentum towards a more gender-inclusive culture and policies. A two-day international space debate was organized at Abu Dhabi on the future of the space sector. Indian delegation was led by Dr. Jitendra Singh, Union Minister for Science and Technology, Earth Sciences and Space, at the event held on 5th and 6th of December 2022. On this occasion, he expressed his desire to take forward the cooperation between India and UAE in the space sector. A Science Monitor report. India is known as a credible player in the space sector thanks to the strengths of its achievements and capabilities. The Indian space industry has grown rapidly since the inception of InSpace in 2020. Recently, on the 5th and 6th of December 2022, India participated as a major stakeholder at the Abu Dhabi space debate held in the United Arab Emirates. Union Minister for Science and Technology, Earth Sciences and Space, Dr. Jitendra Singh, who represented India at the inauguration ceremony of the program, said that India is among the top countries in the space sector and is rapidly growing. He further insisted that India is ready to take its space cooperation with UAE to newer heights. The space sector's development is a priority area for leaders of both India and the United Arab Emirates. And I'm happy to share that India's active space partnership with the UAE dates back to the year 2017, when our PSLV launched UAE's first nanosatellite, NAIF-1, meant for collecting environmental space data. Development of space sector is one of the priority areas for the leaders of both India as well as UAE. India started its space journey seven decades ago and as President Isaac was mentioning, we have sought to make a mark in that sector. We started from a scratch and it is today acknowledged as one of the leading space powers in the world. A highlight of this space journey of India has been our thrust on indigenous development through dedication and hard work of our scientists guided by the commitment of our leaders. 
India began its space journey seven decades ago on a small scale and now it has risen to a position where it is considered a leading space power. This has been possible due to the vision of the country's leadership and the tireless hard work of scientists. Today, after almost 70 years, the Indian space industry has gained worldwide recognition for its credibility. India is proud to have achieved maximum success in the world for its flagship space launch vehicle, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle or PSLV. A few weeks ago, India's PSLV launched 36 satellites from both developed and developing countries. India is also actively promoting the development of startups in the space sector to facilitate the entry of private players into the space sector. I am convinced that the discussions and the debates in these two days will bring out synergies between governments, the private sector and also the scientists for betterment of society and the world as a whole. We also appreciate that the theme of the sustainable development of space sector is also a priority for us back home in India as well. And before I conclude, let me reiterate over here that as a key global player in the space sector, India is keen to take its space cooperation with the UAE to the newer heights and to make maximum use of this August gathering today. I am also confident, confident that the Abu Dhabi space debate will grow in stature in the years to come and become a pre-eminent platform for discussions in space-related matters and also take India, UAE, space cooperation into an entirely different and a much higher spatial orbit. During the Abu Dhabi space debate, India's achievements and capabilities were shared with various partner countries. The Indian space research organization ISRO has launched more than 100 satellites so far and has extensive in-house satellite manufacturing capabilities for GSATs Earth observation satellites and space-based satellite navigation systems. India has also developed its own GPS, which is called the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System or IRNSS. With the Indian philosophy of Vasudev Kutumbakam, India seeks to reach out to all countries and share the benefits of space development to establish closer cooperation between governments and private entities in the space sector. And now let's take a look at some of the latest developments in the country and the world related to science and technology in our special segment, Science Express. An analysis of the first data obtained from the 3.6 meter optical telescope at the Aryabhatta Research Institute of Observational Sciences at Devasthal has revealed unexpected Kailunova emission in a long period gamma ray burst. On December 11, 2021, astronomers observed first of its kind celestial event, detecting a high energy light burst from the outskirts of the Milky Way, located approximately 1 billion light years away. Generally, Kailunova are the visible infrared light associated with short duration gamma ray bursts, that is, GRBs, which are thought to be the heat generated by the radioactive decay of heavy elements. The process also produces heavier elements such as gold and platinum. However, observing Kailunova at near infrared wavelengths is technically challenging. This is the first time that Kailunova emission has been detected in a long period gamma ray burst. The results of this discovery has been published in the research journal Nature. In addition to the first data taken by the 3.6 meter telescope, it also used data from the Hubble Space Telescope the Multicolor Imaging Telescope, the Color Alto Observatory, the Devsthal Fast Optical Telescope and several other telescopes. This will help in understanding the process of the formation of heavy elements in the universe. IIT Kharagpur Professor Suman Chakraborty and his team have recently been awarded the Infosys Prize for developing affordable diagnostic techniques for remote and resource deficit areas. These include Covirap, 
a nucleic acid based rapid diagnostic test for the detection of infectious diseases. It can be used for mass screening of many non communicable diseases at the grassroots level. Apart from this, Professor Chakraborty has also designed a low cost portable handheld imaging device for early screening of oral cancer. The device has successfully completed phase first clinical trials and is now starting field trials. He has also developed a handheld spinning disc which is capable of testing multiple body fluid based parameters with just a single drop of body fluid. His team has also developed a folding paper kit for assessment of antibiotic resistance. Besides these, there are many more accessible and affordable diagnostic test technologies that are being used to provide health aid in remote areas. On 6th of December, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations organized the opening ceremony of the International Year of Millets 2023 in Rome, Italy. The Indian delegation at the opening ceremony was led by the Union Minister of State for Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare, Shobha Karandalaje. India will lead the International Year of Millet celebration and campaign to promote the cultivation and consumption of millets. Millets are the best grain of choice for the consumer, the farmer and the climate. India has been one of the largest producers of millets which are highly nutritious and can be cultivated in semi-arid areas as they require less water for irrigation. In her speech, Ms. Shobha Karandalaji said, there is a need for cooperation among nations to develop a sustainable future and millets can play an important role in this. Efforts such as the celebration of Year of Millets are an opportunity to contribute to the future welfare of mankind by bringing back ancient food grains. The Defense Research and Development Organization handed over the sealed details of the Akash weapon system to the authority concerned at the Missile Systems Quality Assurance Agency on December 3, 2022 in Hyderabad. The process was conducted at the Defense Research and Development Laboratory DRDL, which as a nodal agency has designed and developed the Akash weapon system. Describing the authority holding sealed particulars, AHSP transfer as a landmark event. Defence Minister Sri Rajnath Singh has congratulated DRDO, Indian Army and Industry. Dr. Samir V. Kamar, Secretary, the Department of Defence, R&D and Chairman DRDO said that this transfer process will lay down the roadmap for future missile systems, which is currently under production. Akash is the first state-of-the-art indigenous surface-to-air missile system which has been serving with the armed forces for nearly a decade, protecting the Indian skies and providing national security. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar, A50, Sector 62, Noida 201, 309, Uttar Pradesh. So, we'll take your leave now. See you again next week. Till then, stay safe and think scientifically. Bye for now.